All right, so I, I look, I, I'm a novice, right? But as you said, it got close to the sun. It changed colors uh, because it got hotter. Wouldn't that be natural, though, as it, it was more impacted by the sun's gravitational pull and it got closer to the sun? So you're saying that this this is, is something more than that, which would naturally yeah, it, happen. It, it, it did get hotter, but it's still much cooler than the surface of the sun, which is 5,800 degrees. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we would expect it to be redder than the sun. The moment 3i Atlas emerged from perihelion, it no longer looked like the same object that had quietly slipped into the inner solar system months earlier. Where observers once saw a muted, dust-dominated glow, a striking transformation now confronted telescopes across the world. The comet had turned green. Wrapped in a luminous emerald halo, the comet's transformation was unmistakable signaling a profound change unfolding in real time. For an interstellar visitor already steeped in intrigue, this sudden chromatic shift added a new layer of drama, forcing astronomers to ask not whether something had changed, but how much of the comet's hidden interior had just been exposed by the sun's relentless heat. Before perihelion, 3i Atlas appeared relatively subdued. Its coma showed colors consistent with sunlight reflecting off dust grains, producing warmer, reddish tones typical of a dust-rich environment. This phase told a familiar story, loose material being gently shed as the comet warmed, but without vigorous gas activity dominating the scene. Then came perihelion, the comet's closest approach to the sun, where solar radiation reaches its peak intensity. It is at this point that comets are stressed to their limits, surfaces fracture, and deeper layers are forced into contact with space. When new images arrived after this passage, the change was immediate and undeniable. The coma had shifted decisively toward green, and the dust no longer controlled the narrative. High-quality observations from the Gemini North Telescope captured this transition in striking detail. Using multiple optical filters, astronomers assembled composite images that separated dust-reflected light from gaseous emission. The results left little room for doubt. The post-perihelion coma was dominated by emission lines rather than reflected sunlight, and those emissions aligned perfectly with wavelengths associated with diatomic carbon, or C2. This molecule has long been known as the source of the vivid green glow seen in many active comets, particularly when they are heated intensely by the sun. In the case of 3i Atlas, the green coma was not a curiosity, but a textbook response to solar excitation. The physics behind this transformation is well understood, yet no less compelling to witness. As volatile ices sublimate, they release parent molecules that are quickly broken apart by ultraviolet radiation. Among the resulting fragments is diatomic carbon, which fluoresces when energized by sunlight. This fluorescence produces the characteristic green hue that can overwhelm the visual appearance of a comet's coma when gas production becomes sufficiently strong. The shift observed in 3i Atlas suggests that perihelion stripped away insulating surface layers, allowing fresh, volatile-rich material to erupt into space. Dust did not disappear, but it was no longer the dominant contributor to what observers were seeing. Across the globe, astrophotographers trained their instruments on 3i Atlas and documented the same green glow emerging after perihelion. Among these observers, Ray's astrophotography produced particularly compelling confirmations. Using ground-based telescopes and meticulous processing techniques, these observations mirrored the results seen in large professional facilities. The color was real, persistent, and spatially coherent with the comet's coma. These amateur observations went beyond simple color detection. By stacking exposures, reducing noise, and carefully analyzing background stars, observers were able to isolate the comet's intrinsic features. The green emission remained locked to the object's position and structure, ruling out atmospheric effects or processing artifacts. Ray's imagery also revealed structural details within the coma that added depth to the story. Jets and fan-shaped outflows were visible, extending outward in distinct directions rather than forming a uniform cloud. These features point to localized active regions on the comet's nucleus, where sunlight heats specific areas more intensely. As the nucleus rotates, these jets sweep through space, 
creating patterns and gaps that reflect the object's spin and surface heterogeneity. The green glow seen after perihelion is not the only unusual thing about 3I Atlas. Long before the object turned emerald, a series of anomalies had already set it apart from every interstellar object observed so far. According to Avi Loeb, when these features are examined together rather than in isolation, they form a pattern that is difficult to dismiss as purely coincidental. The color change may be dramatic, but it sits atop a much broader list of statistical, dynamical, chemical, and geometrical oddities that continue to fuel debate about the true nature of this object. One of the first anomalies lies in its trajectory. 3I Atlas is moving in the opposite direction to the planets, yet its path is aligned with the ecliptic plane to within about 5 degrees. For a random interstellar object arriving from deep space, such alignment is highly unlikely, with an estimated probability of just 0.2%. Interstellar objects should approach from arbitrary inclinations, not neatly skim the same flat plane carved out by billions of years of planetary motion. Loeb argues that such precise alignment is statistically suspicious and difficult to reconcile with a purely random origin. The direction from which 3I Atlas arrived adds another layer of intrigue. Its inbound trajectory is coincident to within 9 degrees with the location of the famous WOW signal. Two weeks ago, I realized the arrival direction of 3I Atlas was within 9 degrees of the WOW signal that was detected in 1977, right. Right. which was an enigmatic, powerful radio signal that definitely came from outside of this Earth. The unexplained 1977 radio burst, long associated with the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The probability of this alignment occurring by chance is estimated at roughly 0.6%. While Loeb emphasizes that coincidence alone does not imply causation, he also notes that repeating low-probability alignments begin to stand out when stacked together. Morphologically, 3I Atlas behaves unlike typical comets. Both before and after perihelion, it displayed a persistent sunward jet, sometimes described as an anti-tail. In ordinary comets, such features are often optical illusions caused by viewing geometry. In this case, detailed analysis suggests the jet is real and physically directed toward the sun. Sustaining a sunward jet runs counter to conventional cometary behavior since solar heating normally drives material away from the sun, not toward it. Loeb raises the possibility that this could represent a technological rather than natural mechanism. Timing also plays a role in the list of anomalies. The arrival of 3I Atlas appears fine-tuned in a way that allowed it to pass within tens of millions of kilometers of Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, while simultaneously remaining unobservable from Earth at perihelion due to its proximity to the sun in the sky. The combined likelihood of this timing occurring randomly is estimated at just 0.005%. Such precise sequencing suggests intent rather than chance, especially when viewed alongside what comes next. Perhaps the most striking orbital coincidence involves Jupiter. On March 16, 2026, 3I Atlas is forecasted to pass Jupiter at a distance of approximately 53.6 million kilometers. This is nearly identical to Jupiter's heel radius, about 53.5 million kilometers, the region where Jupiter's gravitational dominance allows stable satellite orbits. Loeb points out that this is an extraordinarily rare coincidence and speculates that such a trajectory would be ideal for deploying artificial satellites or probes into orbit around Jupiter, potentially near its Lagrange points, where minimal energy is required to maintain position. The physical properties of the object further complicate the picture. The nucleus of 3I Atlas appears to be several orders of magnitude more massive than both Oumuamua and 2I Borisov, yet it is moving faster than either of them. According to Loeb, there is insufficient rocky material in interstellar space to naturally deliver an object of this mass into the inner solar system once per decade. This raises the possibility that 3I Atlas was not randomly drawn from the interstellar population, but instead targeted the inner solar system intentionally. Its chemical composition is equally puzzling. Spectroscopic observations indicate that its gas plume contains far more nickel than iron, 
a ratio unlike that seen in any known cometary body. Even more striking is its nickel to cyanide ratio, which is orders of magnitude higher than observed in natural cometary bodies, with an estimated likelihood below 1%. Loeb notes that such ratios resemble those found in industrially produced nickel alloys rather than primordial solar system material, suggesting that the surface composition may not be entirely natural. Jet behavior adds another anomaly. 3I Atlas exhibits jets both toward and away from the sun simultaneously. Producing this pattern through ordinary sublimation would require an unreasonably large active surface area to absorb enough sunlight to drive the observed mass loss. Loeb argues that this energy imbalance raises the possibility that the jets are not driven by sublimating ice at all, but by an alternative energy source, potentially technological in nature. Near perihelion, the object also displayed non-gravitational acceleration, meaning its motion could not be fully explained by gravity alone. While such acceleration is sometimes observed in comets due to asymmetrical outgassing, the magnitude and context of the acceleration in 3I Atlas again strain conventional explanations. Loeb suggests that an engine or propulsion system cannot be ruled out based on current data. Finally, the geometry of the jets themselves stands out. They are tightly collimated and maintain stable orientations over distances exceeding a million kilometers in multiple directions relative to the sun. Natural cometary jets tend to diffuse and lose coherence over such scales. The persistence in directional stability of these jets, according to Loeb, could imply active navigation, attitude control, or even the release of smaller probes from a larger carrier object. Beyond the immediate spectacle, the implications are profound. 3I Atlas offers a rare glimpse into the interior of an interstellar object, revealing that such bodies can preserve volatile rich layers across immense spans of time and space. Its green glow is not merely a visual curiosity, but a diagnostic tool telling astronomers about composition, thermal history, and internal structure. Each molecule fluorescing in the coma carries information about conditions around another star long before the sun ever exerted its influence. For a brief moment, is it passed through the inner solar system, 3I Atlas allowed humanity to watch those forces at work, painting the darkness with a glow that was both beautiful and deeply informative.